Join the Smite Twitchy League for a competitive league action without any toxicity. All you have to do is be a subscriber on Twitch and join our Discord using the description down below. Be able to track your own progress throughout the game. Be able to track what gods are winning, what gods are being played. All the data you could ever want to help improve your own gameplay in a safe, toxic-free environment. Hello, everybody, and welcome to your Charybdis ADC guide. So, with the recent buffing of Death Toll, uh, you're gonna see a whole lot of Death Toll over in that ADC lane. Cherry was already a fan of it before the buff um, because of how it interacts with her one and giving her a great sustain. Uh, so, nowadays, you just go ahead and you lock in the Death Toll because now it's giving you 20 physical power instead of 15 plus it's really cheap and then you can get yourself working into your icky vol plus having some extra attack speed on top of that power early is really nice for your lane clear so with cherry we're going to be starting off with our one although this is actually the ability that we are going to be uh, maxing out last but we do get it at level one because it is going to be our main form of wave clear basically giving us rama autos for the duration of it uh, but the reason why you don't actually level it up to max is because the biggest form of damage increase that it gives you is damage increased to minions which you simply don't need Uh, as far as Cherry's kit, because she is a new god, we're going to go a little bit more in-depth with her kit than we usually do. Uh, so, for Cherry, her first ability we just talked about, kind of being like those Rama autos, make sure you get your three at level two in order to have your escape skill, also probably the best ability in her kit. Her second ability is gonna be your main form of burst damage. And it's gonna be the ability that we're maxing out first. It's gonna be a cone in front of you. And when it hits the target, it is going to do damage. It's gonna slow them down and give a nice armor shred. And the armor shred is gonna really help you um, with tanks in the late stages of the game. A lot of built-in pen on the cherry kit because of that. Then you have Cherry's 3, uh, which is probably her single best ability and one of the better abilities in the game. It is going to throw you underneath the floor. You will become untargetable and vulnerable the whole nine yards. And if you press the ability a second time, it is gonna go ahead and take your tide meter, which you can see over to the left, similar to Poseidon's tide meter. If you have that tide built up, you'll get additional ability effects. It's pretty much always built up. You build it up through autos. It's not hard to build up at all. And if you press the second time, you're gonna get bonus movement speed. And when you come out of the ability, you will have a knockup. So I'm gonna press it twice right here because I wanna make sure that I am running fast away from the Suki. But I'm also gonna make sure that Suki was inside of my range. So that way he actually got knocked back away from me. Attack saving myself from his gank. Now, the one thing that you really, really need to be careful about on Cherry is that her three has about a half a second wind up time. It's called a pre-fire in Smite, which means when you press the button, you do not immediately go into the ability. It's not like a Changa where the second you press the two, you're immediately invulnerable. There's a little charge up time. When I press the ability, you'll watch this animation. During that animation, you are interruptible. So keep that in mind when you're playing Cherry. Really fast, quick abilities can interrupt you out of it. Uh, then of course we have Cherry's unique auto attack chain, which is she's got a regular auto, regular auto, and then a triple auto. That triple auto does actually do more damage. Um, it is just kind of harder to land but it actually does do enhanced damage. It didn't used to, it actually used to do less damage than a regular auto, which was kind of hilarious. Uh, but nowadays it actually does do more damage and it has a unique scaling 
uh, with auto attack proccing items like a kin size uh, an oboe and stuff she has her kind of own unique scaling on all of that stuff because obviously if you could proc a kins uh, three times in a row immediately on her that would be really really OP so it does also scale with those items accordingly An enemy has been slain. on top of that we have the tide meter which we talked about a little bit tide meter just basically makes it uh, so when you use your ability to get a bonus effect on the three when you press it twice it's that bonus movement speed and the knockout on your two it's going to go ahead and be that physical protection reduction um so those are kind of bonus effects that you get from cherry and then her ultimate uh is probably one of the harder abilities to use in smite uh you're going to become a giant monster you become cc immune you have omnidirectional movement which means that you don't have any movement penalty for moving in any particular direction so everything is like you're moving forward. Then on the actual ability itself, you have two different parts of damage. You've got push damage and you've got chomp damage. Hum. The push damage is very, very, very little. It can be used to push enemies away from you uh, in the towers. Um, it can be used to push them into a wall towards a teammate, get yourself set up. But you have to be careful Anonymous bot 3500 because not only can it get you set up but it can also uh, be taken away by bees so the actual chomp damage itself cannot be immune by beads it could be immune by something like an agus but if you go for the push into the chomp and if they bead the push chances are they're not going to get hit by the chomp part of it so you have to decide what you want to exactly do with the ability. Do you want to go for the guaranteed kind of chomp damage and just go well, for the cone? It's do you want to go any. for the full full throttle to and hit both parts of it? Bot Smidex Transformers so you got to be careful. Bundle. Good advertisement for buying the Transformers bundle through our Nexus store. Transformers, cherry in disguise. Now we're going to back up. Grab ourselves our Icky Vol and start working right into our Aussie. Icky Vol Aussie sure right now, really strong start on Hunters. The other popular start that you see is actually Jotun's in the Aussie on ability-based Hunters. A lot of times you'll see like an Anher or something pick up that Jotun's just to have more impales coming out as fast oh as humanly possible. But on Cherry, we do need the attack speed uh, because of how well it works with her one for the clear. Now that we've gotten through um, kind of her kit as a whole, for a Cherry's level order, you're going to want to go 4, 2, 3, 1. 4, 2, 3, 1 on your maxing order. Now we're going to talk about that a little bit. Cherry seems to be the god that I've seen the most people confuse about on their leveling. A lot of people really want to level the one first. There's really no reason to level the one on Cherry um, because this damage that you're seeing, this minion damage, you already full clear the wave. So you can already uh, see me full clearing the wave here um, with the one. So you don't actually need that bonus minion damage. As far as the actual damage that you're getting from Splinter, it's only going up by five per rank, which will actually proc on enemy gods so it's actually not that useful uh, outside of the original point so you obviously get your ultimate whenever you can because your ultimate is going to be great burst damage like that grabbing that kill right there you can see i did not go for the push right there i only went for the claw damage because i thought that the chomp would be enough to kill him and it basically was then you level up your two because your two is just straight burst damage. It's also going to reduce the cooldown. More burst damage more often equals great PvP way. kills opportunities. Ultimate it's also ignorance. not a bad wave clear in and of itself. And then before you level up your three, holy ulti's coming my way, Batman. Or before you level up your one, you're going to level up your three because this is going to reduce the cooldown on your getaway skill. 
and it's also going to give you a really good amount of damage. Uh, Cherries 3 not only is a great getaway skill, it's a really good offensive ability, and it should be used as such, which is why you level Cherry 4, 2, 3, 1. Now, a couple little tips and tricks here uh, for the Cherry right off the bat. Don't be afraid to use your 3 aggressively particularly if you're going uh, into an opponent that's low HP and you're low HP, oftentimes in that Hunter 1v1, you guys are both gonna get each other down pretty low. Being able to go into that three, get underneath the opponent, start channeling that damage against them, and then pop out and knock them up, means you then get a free auto attack on them before they can get one on you, and will oftentimes be enough to go ahead and put that 1v1 match away. Also, of course, just a great generic avoidance ability. Just make sure you're channeling it a little bit early. For cherries too, because it is this giant cone, you actually have more range with it when you're slightly sideways than head on. So if, you, if somebody is just outside of the range, just kind of turn to the side and you're actually gonna get more range out of that ability than you would have if you would have used it straight on. So just a little side turn on that will help you go ahead and get more out of that as well. Holy Suki in my lane camping me, Batman. Uh, outside of that on her ultimate, we mentioned it a little bit earlier, but on the ulti, the majority of the damage is on the fight, not on the charge. So the charge portion should really only be used if you're trying to push a target away from you or trying to push a target into another target in order to get double chomps. Because otherwise the damage that it gives you is not worth uh, the risk of somebody beadsing and not getting hit of by any of the damage also keep in mind that because this is still a sister her ultimate does reset if you get a kill on it so get yourself a nice little reset on that it doesn't happen that often because a lot of times cherry's ultimate is being used as either a catch-up skill or a getaway skill it gives you bonus movement speed so it's a great way to catch up to an opponent that's down the lane also, because your CC immune for the entire six seconds also makes for a great getaway skill if you're being chased and you don't want to get slowed or anything like that. So a lot of good uses outside of just necessarily the damage. Once again, I'm going to turn slightly over to the right hand side so that way I can reach the Heim with my two. Suki is once again back in my lane because I am just making absolute friends right now. My friendship levels are off the chart. The hunt is Enemy on. missing. For your build on Cherry, it is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, most of the hunters right now are almost all uh, building the same kind of items. You're going to have the Aussie because you're going to be building crit. Crit is so strong right now. Spectral got nerfed. Fail not got a slight buff. Um, so crit's going to be all up in your build. So we're grabbing the Aussie because of how well it pairs with that crit. You get low in HP, you get a thick crit on that Aussie proc, all of a sudden you're back at full HP. Gotta get myself out a nice little defensive ward there as well. I think a Willux actually might have warded that at the exact same time, which is kind of funny. Slightly turn to the side, make sure that hits the Heim so I can get some good damage on him. Chomp won't be quite enough to get that kill, so I'm not gonna bother going for it. Your team has destroyed a and then we'll end up, of tower. course, going our standard items. Rage, Dominance, Deathbringer. You can never go wrong with any of these items. Please, please, please make sure that you are buying Dominance on your Hunters. I see people not pick it up and opt for some other items. There is not a better pen item in the game for Hunters than Dominance. It gives you 25% pen on your auto attacks on a Hunter immediately. I got your back, brother. Oh, he got the bag off immediately. So the second you get that online, you are going to start absolutely burning through people. Burning through them. Also a good way to get some mana in your build as well. If you need uh, some mana sustain. A good example is a god like Shibalanke who tends to have some mana problems. Uh, because you don't really have room right now in Hunter builds for a Transcendent. Because you've got to get that Icky Vault online on a lot of those uh, hunters like Shibalanke and Cherry. 
getting that little bit of a third item dominant if you want to put off your crit for just a little bit will give you plenty of mana sustain so i've got my finger right now on my bead just in case i end up needing it got to be careful about him going aggressive with an ulti here but i did grab his tower and now i can back up hard i've got 3k gold gonna hit up this purple buff on the way out and then i am going to dip Janice actually could be looking for an ulti through on me. It looks like Suki is going to be here, so I need to just continue to back up and let this go. So Cherry's biggest weakness is going to be that she doesn't have the longest range as far as hunters are concerned. Um... Even her too, when you do that little side trick, still pretty close range. Uh, so she's a little bit more of an all up in your business style of hunter. So anybody that's got really long range that can stand back uh, in the fight and still participate can be a little bit annoying for Cherry. People just trying out ranger. Obviously your auto attacks are the same as everybody else. Um, but she can struggle in the late game, particularly with positioning. I would say she's one of the harder hunters in terms of making sure that you're in a good team fight position, uh, not putting yourself too far forward. So we'll pay attention to that in the later stages of the game. For gods that you don't want to go against on Cherry, and this is crucial, you don't want to necessarily go against gods with an immediate form of interrupt. So what I mean what I mean by that is anybody that has a form of CC that they can get off faster than your three goes off. Because it has that pre-fire time, anything that goes faster than that can interrupt you out of it, which then sets you up to die. You have one of the best getaway skills in the game if you can get it off. So a Apollo can instantly mez you out of your three, right? He can see you channeling it. He can hear the sound effects. Boom. He can get you right on out of it. Something like a Kumba Karna mez, etc. Very fast paced CCs that can interrupt you out of your three. You got to be very careful about those. The way that they're pushing forward makes me think that they are not alone and they are in fact not alone. The Suki is over here. That's the I'm like, they're playing pretty forward aggressive here. I've got a feeling that I'm about to get uh, ganked by the entire team. And of course we are. It's the Suki again. <laughs> Your left tower so after our rage, we're going to be building ourselves right into the dominance. I prefer to get rage before dominance when at all possible. Uh, just to get those stacks going online earlier, but if you're going against a very tanky team Or if you're particularly far behind you can go ahead and grab that dominance third in order to make sure that you're still Participating even in the fight even without the crit although not having crit in the hunter 1v1 will make those 1v1s really really hard so you got to be careful about that. But if you're playing more passive anyway, it's not that big of a deal. As far as the gods you want on your team, Gab is a great example. She does need something to kind of help keep her alive, uh, particularly in late stages of the game when you're needing to get a little bit farther forward. She just wants a little bit of frontline on her team. Uh, a nice support that can help keep her alive. Yamoja, Terra, Geb, Capri, any one of those will work. She does plenty of damage on her own, so you don't need any additional damage with your support like an Ares. She just wants some more uh, traditional support. And she also wants to make sure that there's frontline over in the solo lane. You don't want a, uh, a mage solo or a hunter solo or anything, how those get run sometimes. Uh, you're really looking for the traditional like warrior guardian solo over there. That way you have two frontliners, two potential forms of peel that can help keep you alive. Also, of course, because you're a hunter, anybody grabbing some of those uh, items as well, like a Shogun or a Talisman of Energy, all of those can be very helpful as well. 
Holy yeah, it's coming through, baby. I'm gonna go ahead and Aegis on this Suki ult. Then I'm gonna pop my ulti just to give me a bit of movement speed so I can try to get away from him. He is gonna continue to go back in towards this. I've got my three back up, which is nice, so I can go into my three. Avoid some of his abilities using that. But we are losing this fight, and Haim has just been split pushing the entire time, which is a little awkward. We've got the extra body here, but they have uh, the lead by far right now. So this is a pretty difficult fight for us. Your right tower is under attack. At this stage of the game, I just need to go back to farming. Need to make sure I don't fall too far behind the Heim. He just AFK'd over in duo. And went for the farm, which is fine. I rotated to try to make the fight work. It was an okay fight. We got a little bit out of it. Uh, if we could have could have killed that Suki Terra, though, that would have been a very big deal for us. Unfortunately, that is a beefy combo that they got over there right now. We're having a hard time killing any of them, but the dominance will help us out actually quite a bit getting that percent penetration online now with the death toll both of the death toll upgrades are actually viable and you're gonna have to play it by year on which one you grab uh the death embrace is a little bit more of a okay i'm getting focused i need the extra survivability and so I'm going to take it Just for the sustain. After all. And then Your death's temper is a little bit more. I'm wrecking right now. I've got lots of damage online. I'm clearing waves. We're going for tower pushing, seven? phoenix pushing. Because then when you clear that full wave, then you get all that bonus damage combined with your crit. You're going to get the thickest crits out Allied from Tempest. Uh, because we're kind of losing this Do game, we've been getting focus. It's probably going to be more along... Uh, the sustain path in order to help try to keep me alive during some of these team fights that they're going so ham your middle tower But both of those are viable upgrades to the death toll. You could sell death toll in order to get another like crit well, item or something. But honestly, that. death toll uh, becomes some really good Wonders upgrades. Smite X Transformers Battle Pass bundle from. So now it's really just it's a very good starting starter item. It's a very good ending starter item. So I would recommend keeping it. Um, if you have to sell something in the late game, you can sell the Icky Vol to actually grab that triple crit item. Now that we've got, you know, the Rage and the Dominance, we're going to go into a Deathbringer. Deathbringer is a crucial item right now for the Hunters, and that's when you're going to get your big money, like, able to three-shot people online, particularly their squishies. I'm going to throw down a Sentry Ward here. I'm going to try to start up this Gold Fury. I need to be a little careful. I should be able to do it because of the Aussie, but if they uh, waddle over here, be careful. we'd be in a little bit of trouble. Just trying to get the team a little bit more cash monies since we're behind in the cash and XP department. I'm gonna back up and head back over to that right hand side. They don't have a lot of people there. I'm gonna buy a sentry ward oh, to help out my team with the vision for around me. the fire. Unfortunately, not quite enough money to rank up that death toll yet. Attack right but we gotta be able to make this fight happen because this is now a 5v3. So we have to be able to get some kills here. Should be able to grab the Kronos. After the Kronos, I'm just gonna try to go ahead and three myself right on out of this one. We did get the Kronos ultimate as well. Haim is over shoving left lane, but he shouldn't be able to get the Phoenix before we can all walk over there, so no harm, no foul. Gonna grab that Death's Embrace, as we talked about earlier, to give me a little bit more sustain in these fights. Plus, it gives you a little bit of HP, just a little bit tankier on that front, you know? A little bit tankier. Now, 
now we're heading into the late game with the cherry and so this is where you're gonna see us not use our ultimate a lot i think this kind of uh, throws off people when they're playing cherry because our ultimate does so much damage you just kind of want to use it you're like i just want to ulti i want to ulti i want to ulti but your ultimate is actually not the most useful in terms of just a raw damage ulti where you would like use in her ulti in the middle of a team fight you have to be very very careful about when you're using cherry ult because you stand still for so long think of it more as a end of the team fight catch up cleanup ability than a using right at the start of the fight because you want to make sure that you're getting your auto attacks off Darn you, Heim Vision. I also like to keep my two channel. You can keep that channel as pretty much as long as you want, and then you can right click to unchannel it. It's always preferential to start with it if you can when you got that tied, because you're going to get that massive armor reduction on the target, and then you're going to crit them right out of their brains. Only problem, of course, being that its range is as Afra mentioned, a little bit short, unless you kind of hit him with the, the little turnaround. Pretty good Gabal right there. Terra obviously not the preferential target. If I could get a crit on the Heim, that would be a game changer here. Should be able to pick him up back there with the Awilix. I'm gonna head back towards the back line. We got a Kronos that came through. Let's see if we can't help kill the Suki before that. Unfortunately, not gonna be able to. It's got a lot coming through on me, so I'm gonna use my three just for a little immunity. Then I'm going to use my ultimate as well, just to give me a little bit of movement kind of away from the Janus. See if I can't use the bite towards him to say, keep some distance between us. Kronos is going to go ahead and ulti for sure. I do have my beads back up. I prefer not to use them though against this Terra, but I can chase this Terra down. Pop my three for some of that bonus movement speed. When I get out of here, hit him with a little two. Slows him down in case I don't kill him, but it actually is going to grab the kill. And that ends up being a pretty respectable fight for us. And I'm going to go for the tier two and left lane off of this. We're not going to be able to do the fire giant, but we can get some gold and XP for the team. So that fight kind of showed you how the cherry uh, concept goes down. You can just kill whatever is in front of you because of your two giving you so much shred. And you just need to be careful about how you are utilizing that ultimate. A lot of times people will just sit in it because it can last for six seconds and you just kind of run around you sit in it for six seconds and then you're not auto attacking during the team fight you really want to keep it up as that getaway skill potential i used it to kind of kite around the janus so he couldn't get super close to me because i knew the unstable vortex was gonna wreck my life And so I use it more as a defensive ability, as a zoning tool to keep him, you know, at a nice, at a nice monster's length away from me. I don't need him any closer than that. At this stage of the game as well in Smite, be careful of these miss. Uh, throughout most of the game, they don't usually end up being that impactful. But as you get into the very late stages of the game, particularly around the fire giant, people can be hiding in those mists and they will be hiding. So make sure you're keeping them warded. Because if you don't have them warded and you're a squishy, you gotta, you gotta stay very far away from those. You never know where the Sukis might be lurking. So I do recommend trying to keep those mists warded. Literally put the ward inside of that... Um, that missed circle don't let it be on the outside put it right in the middle of it smack dab on it Hiding, are we? get rid of that ward I can tank the pyro. I'm not worried about that, but they've got the whole team here. I'm just gonna start channeling my two. I don't know if we have that warded. Kronos is split pushing. So we're gonna have to go in for the fight here because Kronos just went straight up down the mid lane and grabbed our Phoenix. 
So we need to force a fight while he is not here. Got some good damage on the Suki, but he's got some good damage on me too. Kronos could come around the back. He's actually going to go for left Phoenix. Wow, he's really going to go for all of our Phoenixes right now. That is super annoying. Unfortunately, I just can't get myself anywhere near this Suki. He's just poking our brains out. Kronos is going to get that left side Phoenix anyway with his split push. So I'm gonna heal off of right hand side with a little Aussie product, try to stick around for the team since I can't defend it anyway. He's actually gonna go, he's actually gonna end the game though. We're kind of getting cheesed pretty hard right now. I'm not gonna lie. There's not really much that we can do about it because we couldn't win the, uh, the 5v four fast enough because they were keeping us from backing but it doesn't make it not cheesy to be honest <laughs> doesn't make it not cheesy at this point in the game they can basically just go ahead and w key right at our titan so this one is essentially over so at this point it's just see if we can kill the chronos Give him one more for his insolence. <laughs> try to get some bonus movement speed. He's actually going to go for back for the Titan. He's going to try to ulti all the way back in. This is like the biggest level of cheese that you ever seen. Luckily, a reset right as they go to the fire giant. But the level, the level of full blown chrono solo cheese that is going on right now is thick. Oh, leave Suki damage. No, please, Suki, don't do it. He could reach me. I'm dead. Oh, the gap shield, though, was actually sick. Wow, that was actually a really good. That was a really good shield right there to actually keep me alive. They're getting zoned out of the Titan room, actually. If they can find a way to kill the Yanis. Good blink play there from the Awelix. Yen is still around there. There's a kill on Awelix. Ah, somebody's got to go back and probably defend the left side. I'm not up for another 30, but we got a lot of creeps on the Titan. Oh, no. When did the Phoenixes come up? Not super soon. Heim's going to W key right at it. He's going to come in directly for it. That's going to be a hard auto attack to block right there. That was a good try. <laughs> that was a good try there on the defense. So on the cherry in the team fight, you can see you just got to let your team go ahead and get in front of you. You can absolutely smack uh, for days with those crits once you get them online because of the built-in pen on the two. You're quite safe with the three. You can avoid things like the Suki ult when you've got your three and stuff up. Uh, so keep that in mind, but at the end of the day, you know, you can get cheesed. What are you going to do? And that is your Cherubdis ADC guide. Thank you for supporting the Twitchiest community. If you'd like to see more videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Thank you for all your support and have a twitching day, y'all.